A young man named Ye Ching, a level zero abyssal scavenger, fights desperately against a menacing spirit wolf demon beast. Bruised and battered, he clutches a makeshift shield crafted from wood and a broken stick. As he faces the formidable adversary, he mutters to himself, Since I can't deal any damage to a demon beast, I can only survive by picking up the trash left by the job changers. With dissatisfaction etched on his face, Ye Ching grimly acknowledges his status. A level zero like me is considered a social burden, a useless person, a trash. Undeterred, he rushes toward the spirit wolf, attempting to strike the beast. Unfortunately, the demon wolf breaks through his armor, sinking its teeth into Ye Ching's shoulder, inflicting a serious injury. Despite the pain, a resolute gleam appears in Ye Ching's eyes. I will never die like a piece of trash, he declares loudly, gripping the broken stick tightly and striking the spirit wolf. A notification appears, informing him, You have dealt a critical hit to the spirit wolf. One point of damage dealt. The scene shifts to G City, where everything began. A man strides purposefully toward the rank, see Abyssal Gate, a sword gripped firmly in his hand. As he nears the gate, a shadow emerges. It's our protagonist, Ye Ching, a senior Abyssal scavenger, being pursued by demon beasts. In the nick of time, the man rushes to Ye Ching's aid, deftly slicing through the beast's tentacles while scolding, You are too slow, idiot! As Ye Ching places the box containing crystals on the ground, he mutters to himself while diligently cleaning the precious gems. The daily job is to collect and recycle the trash left behind by the adventurer teams after they defeat monsters. Because the overseers of the abyss never allow resources to flow to the ordinary people in society. After all, this crystal is graded as a sea level in terms of quality and one is worth over 50,000 yuan. Amidst his task, the man with the sword, having successfully dealt with the demon beast, approaches Ye Ching. Casually putting his leg over the box, he issues a warning. Hey kid, we will inventory all the outputs of this dungeon. If there is any private hoarding of magic crystals, not only will you lose a large sum of money, but you will also end up in jail. Did you understand? Ye King responds with a confident smile. Don't worry, boss. I've been in this job for many years. I know all the rules. Turning around, he observes fellow members of the Abyssal Scavenger rushing out of the Abyssal Gate. Contemplating the dangers of his role, he mutters to himself, The job of an Abyssal Scavenger is usually held by level zero players, and if the front combat team doesn't clean up the monsters thoroughly, the level zero players in the back would be in danger of losing their lives at any time. It's accurate to say that this job is worth one's life. Sighing, Ye Ching continues his work. A trip back from the dungeon alive is a base salary of 300 yuan, and each picker gets a share of one thousandth of the value of the garbage they pick up, which is about 600 yuan, netting a profit of 540 yuan after deducting an agency fee of 30%. I'm still 670,000 yuan away from paying off my debt. I have to work a little harder to get there. As Ye Ching was about to depart, a man wielding a pickaxe intercepted him with a tempting offer. Hey, kid named Ye, I've got a big job with a commission of three thousandths. Are you going or not? Surprised by the proposition, Ye Ching's eyes widened. Three thousandths? Such a high commission? The man grinned knowingly, aware of Ye Ching's perpetual financial struggles. Aren't you always short of money? If you want to go, join the team immediately. Determined to seize this opportunity, Ye Ching wasted no time in accepting. I will go. I'll get ready right away. Inside the bus, chatter buzzed among the members of the Abyssal Scavenger team. The mention of Shenfeng City People's Shopping Center, now transformed into an abyss-rated dungeon, piqued their curiosity. Shenfeng City? People's Shopping Center? That's the abyss-transformed dungeon mentioned in the news just now, right?
They say it's rated as A-grade, remarked one member. The significance of the high commission became apparent as another passenger elaborated. No wonder they're offering such a high commission. I heard that there was a team that entered before and none of them came out. Speculation arose regarding the nature of the task, with someone questioning whether it was another subcontracted job. Confirmation followed from a nearby passenger affirming their suspicions. This time, in addition to clearing the dungeon, there's also an important task, to retrieve the equipment from the previous wiped-out team, revealed an anxious man. Expressions of discontent rippled through the group, with one man lamenting the exploitation inherent in such endeavors. Darn, these old capitalists really know how to exploit people without any mercy. Lost in thought, Ye Ching gazed out the window, reminiscing about the cataclysmic events of a decade prior. The descent of the Abyssal Gate heralded the emergence of creatures from the Abyssal Realm, reshaping society as only those with specialized professions could combat them effectively. As the demon creatures died, people discovered that in the Abyss there are not only magic crystals as an energy source, but it will also drop various magical weapons and items, he recalled, likening it to the discovery of a new continent. Many traditional enterprises closed down, and the entire society's capital shifted toward emerging markets, the abyss industry. As memories flooded Ye Ching's mind, he couldn't shake the bitter recollection of his countless rejections from Abyssal Industries. Despite his relentless efforts, each attempt to secure employment ended in disappointment as his level zero status became an insurmountable barrier. Doors slammed shut in his face, and he was met with disdainful glances, as if his worth was solely defined by a number. But it was a particularly painful encounter at the hospital that haunted him the most. The memory of the heartless doctor's words cut deep, echoing in his mind like a cruel refrain. A hospital is not an orphanage. If you don't pay the fee, take your sister and leave quickly. Yet, despite the crushing weight of despair... Ye Ching refused to surrender. With a heavy heart and a trembling voice, he begged the doctor for mercy, clinging to the fragile hope of a reprieve. I'm sorry. Please give me a few more days, he implored, his desperation palpable. In that moment, Ye Ching realized the harsh truth of his reality. In a world governed by status and privilege, his level zero designation condemned him to a life of hardship and marginalization. At that moment, as our protagonist sits on a bench under the heavy rain, the weight of despair bearing down on him, he finds himself lost in a sea of hopelessness. With eyes fixed upon the ground, he mutters to himself, the words barely audible over the drumming of raindrops, the employment situation is unprecedentedly tough for level zero players who haven't succeeded in changing jobs. Basically, they have become the trash of society. In the midst of his desolation, a figure emerges from the haze of rain, approaching with purpose. With a quickened pulse, our protagonist watches as the stranger extends a card towards him. The words, small loan, instantly deposited, scrawled across its surface. Confusion flickers across his features as he accepts the card, his mind racing with questions. Before he can voice his inquiry, the stranger speaks, his voice cutting through the din of the storm. Young man, do you need money? He asks, his tone tinged with an edge of urgency. Collateral, it's the most valuable thing you have. Your organs... As Ye Ching finishes recollecting the painful past, a heavy sigh escapes his lips, carrying with it the weight of unspoken struggles. Suddenly, a voice from the front interrupts the silence. I heard he borrowed one million in high-interest loans to speculate on stocks and lost everything, that person remarked. If he can't repay, he might have to sell his kidney. It seems he also has a dependent sister who relies on him for support, and the medical expenses alone are quite high every day. Ye Ching's heart sank as he realized the conversation was about him. His discomfort surged, 
mingling with shame and regret. How did he end up in this situation? How did his life spiral out of control so quickly? When the scavenger team has reached their destination, one of the job changer's members, a stern figure, scolds them, you scavenger team are too slow. Just then, another one steps forward, issuing a stern warning. Follow us. We won't take responsibility if you die. As Ye Ching approaches the abyssal gate, determination carves itself into his features. This time, I need to work hard to make money and come back alive, he declares, a steely resolve in his voice. The abyssal gate looms before him, an ominous portal to unknown challenges and dangers. With a deep breath, Ye Ching steps through, his resolve unwavering. Upon entering the abyss, Ye Ching takes a moment to observe his surroundings, noting the eerie atmosphere. It's the first time I have come to a B-rank abyss, he mutters, his eyes scanning the dark expanse. The air is thick with an unspoken menace, the silence a foreboding prelude to the chaos that lies ahead. Suddenly, the tranquility is shattered by the emergence of a pack of demon-beast wolves, their eyes glowing menacingly in the dim light. The job changer's squad, caught off guard by the sudden appearance, springs into action. The team leader, a figure of authority and experience, quickly orders his members to prepare for a fight. In the midst of the commotion, a mage named Lao Chen steps forward. With practiced ease, he conjures magic balls of fire in both hands and hurls them towards the spirit wolves. The resulting explosion sends the wolves scampering away in fear, their howls fading into the distance. The team leader, seizing the moment to instill caution, reminds them, don't take it lightly, monsters may ambush from any dark corner. His warning hangs in the air, a stark reminder of the perilous nature of their mission. Curious about their objective, a team member inquires, what is our destination? The leader, with a sense of urgency in his voice, responds, the fifth floor. The revelation sets the stage for the perilous journey ahead. As they proceed, a female member of the squad comments on the bizarre nature of their surroundings. I don't know if it's an illusion, but the area of the first floor of this shopping mall seems to have increased by more than five times, and the height of one floor has also increased by more than three times. Her observation points to the strange and distorted reality of the abyss. The man with glasses, knowledgeable and analytical, explains, This is the abyssalization, a dungeon created based on the appearance of the real world, but its internal structure has undergone a complete mutation. His explanation sheds light on the disorienting environment they must navigate. His thoughts then turn to the fate of the previous team sent into the abyss. By the way, how come the team that was sent in earlier left no information at all? Where are the bodies? The lack of evidence regarding their predecessor's fate adds a layer of mystery and foreboding to their mission. Addressing the scavengers with a sharp command, he says, Hey, you bunch of scavengers, find me the bodies properly, don't just act like followers. As our protagonist, Ye Ching, walks with purpose, scanning his surroundings. Oblivious to the guy named Lao Chen stopping to tie his shoe, Ye Ching collides with him, resulting in an ungraceful tumble to the ground. Lao Chen, clearly agitated, refuses to accept Ye Ching's swift apology. Fueled by anger, Lao Chen grabs Ye Ching by his clothes and forcefully shoves him against the nearest wall. Bumping into a pile of garbage is really disgusting. I thought it was a monster, he spews his words cutting through the air like a whip. The tension escalates, but just as the confrontation reaches its peak, the team leader intervenes with a commanding tone. Lao Chen, don't stoop to the level of these scavengers. We have a mission on our hands. Despite his evident frustration, Lao Chen reluctantly releases his grip on Ye Ching. However, he leaves him with a parting warning. If you know your trash, get the hell away from me. On the ground, with a despondent expression, Ye Ching mutters to himself about encountering a bully who looks down on others. He brushes off the dust, retrieves his cap, and continues walking. 
A torrent of self-doubt floods his mind as he reflects on how, as a level zero member, he's considered trash, a useless person, and a burden to society. With each step, Ye Ching's internal monologue becomes a stream of determination. He mutters about the unjust categorization he faces, vowing silently that everything will change from this moment onward. His gaze sharpens, a newfound confidence gleaming in his eyes as he marches forward, eager to prove his worth. In the aftermath of a fierce battle between the Job Changers team and a horde of beasts, the scavengers lingered at the back, collecting the precious crystals left behind by the fallen creatures. As they work diligently, their attention is suddenly arrested by the ominous presence of a spirit wolf demon beast emerging from the shadows. Panic seizes the scavengers, and with fear etched on their faces, they scramble to escape the impending threat. However, amidst the chaos, Ye Ching remains rooted in place, beads of sweat forming on his forehead. With a mixture of curiosity and trepidation, he observes the approaching spirit wolf and murmurs, Was it the guy who missed in the front line? His eyes then flit towards a level one wooden shield and a stick lying nearby. As the spirit wolf lunges forward, Ye Ching reacts with lightning reflexes, narrowly evading the creature's attack. Gripping the wooden shield and stick tightly, he declares, This beast is the opportunity I have been eagerly waiting for. With newfound confidence, he charges at the spirit wolf, leaping into the air and aiming a powerful strike at its head. Unfortunately, to his dismay, the attack inflicts zero damage on the formidable foe. Unbeknownst to Ye Ching, two members of the scavenger's squad, lurking in the shadows, exchange bewildered glances. Is this guy Ye Ching a stupid idiot? One whispers to the other. This kid has been courting death for quite some time now. Doesn't he know that only class changers can inflict damage on monsters? With the awareness of his limitations, Ye Ching mutters, Of course, I know. Undeterred, he continues to engage the spirit wolf in battle, determined to overcome the odds. At level zero, with all attributes like strength, agility, intelligence, will, constitution, and luck at level one, Ye Ching struggles to defend himself, let alone defeat the formidable creature. As he evades the relentless attacks of the spirit wolf, Ye Ching mutters, With such weak attribute values, even the weakest monsters cannot be penetrated. I am more aware of this than anyone else. His movements become more strategic as he uses a plant stem to vault into the air, skillfully evading the creature's fierce assault. In a moment of calculated bravery, Ye Ching retaliates with a fierce attack, determination burning in his eyes. In the aftermath of the Job Changer's triumphant battle against the Spirit Wolves, Lao Chen remarks, Those level zero individuals would be frightened and lose their legs even just seeing a low health monster. Holding a crystal in his hand, the team leader, exuding confidence, chimes in, We can easily kill a few monsters with a wave of our hands and make a fortune. They have no way to deal with monsters, truly a bunch of lowly trash. With a mocking smile, he adds, We will pick up the most valuable treasures, and the rest is left to the scavengers. Tell those pieces of trash to come and clean up. Amidst this conversation, the assassin lady interjects, Hey boss, there seems to be a monster slipped through over there. The tranquility shatters as screams pierce the air, the unmistakable cries of the scavengers. Panic ensues. It's a demon beast, run! An irritated look crosses Lao Chen's face as he says, It's really troublesome. I'll go handle it. With a pointed finger, he directs their attention to an item dropped by the vanquished beast. I've demanded that purple suit. Nobody better try to snatch it from me. In the midst of the fierce battle, our protagonist, Ye Ching, continues to face off against the spirit wolf with unwavering determination. As the creature lunges forward, its razor-sharp teeth sink into Ye Ching's shoulder, inflicting a grievous wound. Despite the searing pain coursing through his body, a fierce resolve glimmers in Ye Ching's eyes. I will never die like a piece of trash, 
he declares defiantly, his voice ringing out above the din of battle. With sheer willpower fueling his movements, Ye Ching tightens his grip on the broken stick and delivers a powerful strike to the spirit wolf's head. A notification suddenly appears before him, illuminating the darkness with its message. You have dealt a critical hit to the spirit wolf. One point of damage dealt. In an instant, the formidable adversary collapses, defeated by Ye Ching's sheer determination and skill. With a heavy breath and blood staining his face, Ye Ching can't help but burst into laughter, his victorious cry echoing through the place. He screams, a mixture of exhilaration and relief coursing through his veins. Yet amidst the aftermath of battle, the sound of approaching footsteps catches Ye Ching's attention. He turns to see Lao Chen, the guy of the Job Changers team, walking towards him. Yo, I can't believe you single-handedly took out a low-level wolf. His tone, laced with mockery, belittles Ye Ching's achievement. Then, without warning, he grabs Ye Ching by his clothes, his grip a vice of authority and power. Are you trying to act as a hero? Do you think you have lived for too long? Despite Lao Chen's harsh words, our protagonist remains unfazed, offering only a serene smile in response. He knows that there are countless paths to achieving his goals, and he is determined to carve his own. In his mind, Ye Ching replays the knowledge he has accumulated over the years. He understands that reaching level one is a pivotal milestone, opening the door to the possibility of triggering a class change. Even for a level zero individual like himself, there are ways to achieve this feat, perhaps even uncovering hidden professions along the way. But he also knows the challenge that lies ahead. For someone who cannot inflict damage on monsters, gaining the experience points needed for leveling up is akin to reaching for the stars. It's a daunting task that requires resilience, determination, and a willingness to push past one's limits. For years, Ye Ching has risked life and limb in pursuit of his goal. He has searched tirelessly for vulnerabilities, honing his skills to deal at least one point of damage with a critical hit. Each battle, each encounter with a monster, has been a step towards his ultimate objective. And now, as the defeated spirit wolf lies at his feet, Ye Ching feels a surge of triumph. He has finally achieved what seemed impossible. He has reached 100% experience points, a milestone that marks the culmination of his efforts. With a weary expression etched on his face, Ye Ching mumbles to himself, This is the only way I can earn experience points. Despite the fatigue evident in his eyes, a faint smile dances on his lips as he whispers, Condition fulfilled. Instantly, a notification materializes, announcing that the conditions for leveling up have been met. Suddenly, Ye Ching begins to emit a soft glow, leaving Lao Chen gaping in astonishment. You little kid actually earning experience for a class job changer? He blurts out incredulously. At that precise moment, the system intervenes with a notification, proclaiming, Congratulations for reaching level one. However, Ye Ching's jubilation swiftly transforms into sheer disbelief upon realizing that he has attained the maximum level for the scavenger class, level one. Meanwhile, Lao Chen finds himself unable to contain his laughter. What the hell kind of class change is this? He guffaws. You're picking up trash, and even after the job change, you remain a stinky trash picker, and the maximum level is only level one. Seizing Ye Ching's shoulder, Lao Chen continues to chuckle. Ha 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 ha. Sorry, I just couldn't hold it in, he manages to say amidst his laughter. In a lifetime amidst all the opportunities, you end up choosing a profession that sounds like pure trash, just from its name. Ha 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 ha. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect for you. With a fierce gleam in his eyes, Lao Chen delivers a pointed reminder. Listen up, level one scavenger. Your buddies have all fled. The task of cleaning up now falls solely on your shoulders. As Lao Chen departs, Ye Ching finds himself pondering the nature of the scavenger profession. Is it weak? 
he mutters to himself, gazing at his blood-stained hands. If the scavenger's maximum level is level one, it's not possible to rely on leveling up for attribute growth. His gaze shifts to the corpse of the spirit wolf beast nearby, prompting him to wonder, but what exactly is the ability of a scavenger? Suddenly, his eyes are drawn to the aura emanating from the wolf. Before he can contemplate further, a notification pops up. Discovered recyclable trash, low-level ghost wolf, corpse. Will you recycle it? Shocked by the proposition, Ye Ching hesitates for a moment before ultimately accepting to recycle the spirit wolf's corpse. In an instant, numerous arms materialize behind him, a manifestation of some latent ability. Sweating with fear, Ye Ching watches as the arms grasp the beast. The ability of the scavenger, he exclaims, bewildered by the sight. Observing the corpse being dragged into the black fog, Ye Ching remarks, It seems a little scary. Moments later, another notification appears indicating that the process of disintegrating the garbage is underway. After a brief interval, the system announces the completion of the disintegration process. Suddenly, a hand emerges, holding a card depicting the spirit wolf, along with three glowing orbs. The system explains that the card represents an ability called Spirit Dash, while the orbs are attribute points. Overwhelmed by this discovery, Ye Ching wonders aloud, Can I pick up cards and freely allocate attributes from corpses? As Ye Ching opens the system attribute panel, a notification promptly appears, indicating that three points of agility are required to use the Spirit Dash card. Without hesitation, he allocates three points to agility on the panel. Another notification follows, announcing that he has met the prerequisites for using the Spirit Dash card. Do you want to use it? The system prompts. Use it! Ye Ching replies without wasting a moment. Instantly, the card transforms into energy and surges into Ye Ching's body. As he opens his eyes, a surprised expression crosses his face. That's all? Is there no effect? He wonders aloud. Suddenly, he hears a loud voice calling for him. Come over here quickly and clean the floor. Ye Ching replies with a panicking face. Yes! With a forceful push of his legs against the ground, cracks appear in it. Surprisingly, he begins to run with astonishing speed. This unexpected boost causes him to scream loudly from the sudden acceleration, resulting in him tumbling over a plant stem and falling to the ground. Was that a skill? he muses aloud. Just then, a notification appears, informing him that the spirit dash is on cooldown. It dawns on him that he has indeed used the skill. As Ye Ching rises from the ground, he lets out a heavy sigh. However, his attention is quickly drawn to the lifeless bodies of the spirit wolves, slain by the job changer team. Notifications flood his vision, informing him that all of these corpses are recyclable a spark of realization ignites within him. Not only can I pick up attributes, but I can also recycle the abilities of monsters, he exclaims in astonishment. That's the unique ability of the level one scavenger. With a newfound sense of purpose, Ye Ching activates the scavenger ability. Scavengers are really strong, he declares confidently, his determination renewed. Armed with this unique skill, he sets out to make the most of his newfound abilities and carve a path for himself in this challenging world. Ye Ching harnesses the power of the scavenger ability, transforming the corpse of the spirit wolf into recyclable material. With each conversion, he amasses a wealth of attribute points, his hands overflowing with newfound strength. As he gazes at the hand of the scavenger ability, clutching a single attribute point, Ye Ching muses, since the first time I touched the corpse of the ghost wolf, I gained the ability of Soul Dash. However, subsequent encounters with the same type of corpse won't yield any new ability recovery. Moreover, if I recycle a large number of corpses of the same kind, the rewards will gradually decrease. 
Intrigued by the intricacies of his newfound skill, Ye Ching poses a question to the scavenger ability. Is the skill a one-time reward that requires recycling new types of corpses to obtain? He inquires, his eyes locked on the hands of the scavenger ability. In response, the hands of the scavenger ability nod in agreement, signaling their affirmation with a thumbs-up gesture. With a sense of anticipation, Ye Ching opens the attribute panel, greeted by the notification that allocatable points have accumulated to a 111 points. With a mix of wonder and confusion, he exclaims, Which attribute should I add? It looks like there won't be a shortage of attribute points in the future. A smile graces his face as an idea takes hold. Why don't I just do that? I'll distribute them evenly, he declares, his eyes shining with determination. With decisive movements, Ye Ching begins to allocate points to each attribute, ensuring that they all reach level 20. As he meticulously distributes the points, a sense of satisfaction washes over him. In the midst of the final confrontation with the two remaining spirit wolves, the job changer team springs into action with coordinated precision. The leader, wielding his sword with finesse, delivers a swift and decisive strike that fells one of the beasts. Lao Chen follows suit, summoning flames that engulf the second wolf. Meanwhile, the third member of the team channels healing energy, ensuring that their comrades remain strong and resilient throughout the intense battle. As the last embers of the fiery clash fade away and the job changer team emerges victorious, the leader turns to Lao Chen with a curious expression. Are you saying that guy changed jobs to become a scavenger? He asks, his voice tinged with disbelief. A sly grin spreads across the face of the team member wearing glasses as he responds, Tesk. Every year, hidden professions are added to the great job change table but the rankings for the most valuable professions have hardly changed. Most of the so-called hidden professions are just for laughs. Amidst this banter, Lao Chen offers his perspective on the matter. Considering that his highest level is only one, at most, he's an F rank, just slightly better than a level zero person, he remarks. As they finally reach their destination, the job changer team is met with a shocking sight. The lifeless body of the person they have been searching for lies before them. A sense of disbelief washes over them as they take in the scene before them. At that moment, the leader speaks up, his voice somber yet resolute. The mission target has been located. This is Captain Hawkeye, leader of the Falcon Hunting Party, Hunter, he announces, his words carrying the weight of their grim discovery. Beside him, the assassin lady voices her confusion. A mound of soil? How could there be a mound of soil in this shopping mall? We're on the fifth floor here, she remarks, her brow furrowing in bewilderment. Approaching the corpse, the team member with glasses observes the scene with a critical eye. The total time of abyssal transformation here doesn't exceed 48 hours, yet the corpses have already dried up to this extent. Were they drained by some kind of magic? he wonders aloud, his tone laced with concern. In response, the assassin lady offers her own insights. We've only encountered low-rank spirit wolves along the way, but they are from the B-plus ranked falcon hunting party. Isn't it strange that they all died here? She muses, her voice tinged with suspicion. As the leader scans the area, a chilling realization dawns upon him, the ground beneath his feet begins to shift and stir, revealing the horrifying sight of reanimated corpses emerging as zombies. His voice resonates with urgency as he issues a command to his team. Everyone, fall back. It's an ambush. We've been tricked. With the zombies closing in, Lao Chen springs into action, unleashing torrents of flames from his palms in a desperate attempt to fend off the advancing horde. I was wondering why we didn't find their bodies. It turns out they were gathered here, piled up into a mountain of corpses, he remarks, his voice tinged with disbelief. The leader, wielding his shield as a weapon, delivers a powerful blow to one of the zombies, his voice grim as he acknowledges the gravity of the situation. 
The low-level monsters along the way were just bait to lure the enemy deeper in, he explains, his eyes narrowing with determination. Just as they think they have the situation under control, something unexpected emerges from the ground. The leader's expression twists in shock as he recognizes the true master of the abyss, a monstrous creature with three eyes, the high-level hell-eating man-eater flower, nearly A-rank in strength. As the team stares in horror at the formidable foe before them, their attention is suddenly diverted by a frantic cry from Lao Chen. Guys, look up! The falcon hunting party has all come back to life, he exclaims, his voice trembling with panic. As our protagonist, Ye Ching, diligently goes about his tasks of collecting crystals and recycling the corpses of fallen beasts, his efforts are met with a flurry notification from the system. Achieved the novice scavenger's milestone in the city test by recycling 50 bodies, the message declares, causing a wide grin to spread across Ye Ching's face. Ha ha! Achievement accomplished! he exclaims jubilantly, his spirits soaring at the recognition of his hard work and dedication. With eager anticipation, he awaits the promised reward from the system, his excitement palpable. Suddenly a card materializes before him, revealing an ordinary dagger of level one. Ye Ching's initial elation quickly gives way to bewilderment as he gazes at the seemingly mundane item before him. Requirement level is one. Even the achievements given by the profession are of poor quality, he mutters, a wry smile tugging at the corners of his lips. Quite funny. Just then, a sudden rumble interrupts the eerie silence. Alert and on edge, he swiftly turns his head, sensing impending danger. Before he can fully comprehend the situation, a terrifying sight greets him. A zombie lady hurtles towards him with alarming speed, her grotesque form sending shivers down his spine. Reacting on pure instinct, Ye Ching executes a graceful backflip, narrowly evading the zombie's outstretched claws. As he lands safely on his feet, relief floods through him. You scared me! I thought I was done for! He exclaims, his heart still pounding from the adrenaline rush. Pausing to catch his breath, Ye Ching examines his hand, feeling a newfound sense of agility coursing through his veins. However, I feel that my body has become very agile. Is it because I added attribute points? He wonders aloud, a thoughtful expression crossing his features. With a triumphant smile, he clenches his fist, reveling in the sensation of strength pulsating within him. It seems that I've really gotten stronger. Lost in his own thoughts, Ye Ching almost misses the incoming attack from the zombie. With lightning-fast reflexes, he sidesteps just in time, narrowly avoiding the creature's grasp. As he surveys the scene, his eyes alight upon the zombie's arm, now lodged firmly in the wall. Not only agility, I've also increased my strength, he observes, marveling at the effects of his attribute enhancements. Drawing upon his newfound abilities, Ye King channels the spirit dash skill, determination gleaming in his eyes. Now it's my turn. I'm a job changer now. This time, it won't be zero damage anymore, he declares with conviction, delivering a powerful punch that sends the zombie crashing into the wall with a sickening thud. In the aftermath of the attack, the system interface materializes before Ye Ching, delivering crucial feedback on his actions. Triggered strength check 20, it announces, revealing the successful infliction of a defense-breaking effect and a doubling of physical damage. With a satisfied grain, Ye Ching realizes the extent of his newfound prowess. I am no longer the same as before, he muses, a sense of pride swelling within him. Just as he begins to process this revelation, another notification appears, sparking surprise and curiosity. With 20 points of intelligence, your insight has significantly increased, allowing you to uncover hidden information about the target, it reveals, further expanding Ye Ching's understanding of his evolving capabilities. Following this revelation, yet another notification emerges, shedding light on the weaknesses of the zombie. Parasitized human elite level, 
weakness, fire, neck junction area, it discloses, providing valuable insight into how best to confront the formidable foe. As the female zombie hurtled towards him, claws extended menacingly, Ye Ching's instincts kicked in. With lightning-fast reflexes, he dodged beneath her outstretched arms, executing a nimble slide to safety. Now positioned behind the creature, Ye Ching seizes the opportunity to strike, summoning the dagger card into his hand. Gripping the weapon tightly, he plunges it into the exposed neck of the zombie, targeting its weak point with precision. With a decisive motion, he delivers a fatal blow, severing the creature's spine and effectively neutralizing the threat. A notification promptly appears before Ye Ching, confirming his victory. You have killed the parasitized human, it declares, validating his first solo kill. Moments later, another notification follows, providing further feedback on the situation. Triggered a constitution check, 20. The poison effect has been nullified in this instance, it reports, indicating Ye Ching's successful resistance to the zombie's toxic influence. With a satisfied smile, Ye Ching reflects on his accomplishment. It was a success. First solo kill, he exclaims, a sense of pride swelling within him. The system then presents a crucial decision to Ye Ching, offering the opportunity to recycle the defeated parasitized human. Without hesitation, our protagonist accepts the offer, opting to recycle the creature and reap the potential rewards. Following the recycling process, Ye Ching is rewarded with a skill, the Toxic Transformation Card. Intrigued by its description, he contemplates its implications. Does the effect of toxic transformation mean that you can drink poisonous waste potions as a tonic? He muses aloud, pondering the newfound ability. Driven by curiosity, Ye Ching decides to test the limits of his new skill. Activating the toxic transformation card, he eagerly awaits the outcome. To his surprise, the system responds once again acknowledging his use of the passive skill and granting him five allocatable points to further enhance his abilities. With the degraded potion card in his hand, Ye Ching contemplates its potential. With toxic transformation, deadly poison can be transformed into beneficial effects, he murmurs, his mind racing with possibilities. Without hesitation, he raises the potion to his lips, determined to uncover its effects. As the toxic liquid passes his lips, a surge of energy courses through Ye Ching's body. A notification appears before him, confirming his hypothesis. The effects of poisoning are reversed into healing effects due to toxic transformation. A triumphant smile spreads across his face as he observes his wounds beginning to mend. The injuries have been healed, he declares, a sense of relief washing over him but the surprises don't end there. Another notification appears, announcing a newfound buff. System gained buff, energize. All base attribute values doubled, effect lasts for 10 minutes. Ye Ching's eyes widen in amazement at the sudden influx of power. The randomly obtained effect is incredibly potent, he marvels, feeling a surge of strength coursing through his veins. With newfound vigor, Ye Ching turns his attention to his attribute panel, contemplating his next move. I remember that after raising intelligence to a certain value, I can unlock hidden information about the target, he recalls. With determination, he allocates his five attribute points to intelligence, eager to expand his understanding of the world around him. As Ye Ching hears the rumbling behind him, he quickly turns, his heart pounding in anticipation. Did I miss a monster again? He exclaims, scanning the area with wide eyes. However, what he sees sends a shiver down his spine, a horde of zombies emerging from the shadows. His surprise quickly turns to alarm as he takes in the sheer number of zombies creatures heading his way. That's a bit much, he mutters under his breath, his mind racing as he assesses the situation. 
The memories of past insults and ridicule flood his mind, reminding him of the times he was called worthless and a burden to society. With a grim determination, Ye Ching tightens his grip on his sword, steeling himself for the impending confrontation. But now, it's time to tell them out loud, he declares, his voice filled with newfound resolve. My name is Ye Ching. I am a scavenger, he shouts defiantly, his words echoing through the air. As the zombies draw nearer, Ye Ching braces himself for battle. Piece of garbages! Bring it on! he cries out. In the heat of battle, the team of the job changer found themselves locked in a desperate struggle for survival. Amidst the chaos of combat, a cry of dismay pierces the air. Darn it! The Falcon Hunt team has been parasitized, shouts one of the team members, his voice filled with frustration as he fends off a hacking zombie. The team leader, his face etched with anxiety, watches the gruesome scene unfold. Even in death, their strength surpasses expectations, he mutters, his voice tinged with apprehension, and the man-eater flower boss. We can't afford to underestimate it. With grim determination, he issues the command to retreat, knowing they are outmatched. But escape proves elusive as the relentless monsters pursue them without mercy. In the midst of their escape, tragedy strikes. The lady assassin falls to a fatal blow, her death a grim reminder of the stakes they face. The man with the glasses meets a similarly grim fate, his demise a testament to the brutality of their enemies. Now only the team leader and Lao Chen remain, their survival hanging by a thread. With no other options left, the team leader make the fateful decision to stand his ground and confront the encroaching horde. But while the team leader braces himself for the coming onslaught, Lao Chen's motives prove to be far more sinister. I'm here for the money and equipment, he confesses, fear etched across his face as he eyes the encroaching horde. Dying here would be pointless. In a shocking twist of fate, Lao Chen turned against his own leader, casting a magic spell that slowed his movements and left him vulnerable to the advancing horde. Confusion and betrayal flashes across the leader's face as he struggles against the magical restraint. What the hell are you doing? We are teammates! He cries out, his words falling on deaf ears as Lao Chen continues to cast his spell. I need you to slow them down for me. Lao Chen replies, his voice tinged with desperation as he seizes the opportunity to escape. The team leader, powerless to resist the magic that ensnares him, watches helplessly as Lao Chen disappears. When I come back, I'll spend extra money on your funeral, Lao Chen taunts, his words a cruel reminder of his treachery. And as the team leader succumbs to the relentless onslaught of the zombies, his final words echo through the darkness. Ah, Lao Chen, I won't forgive you, he cries out. Lao Chen's footsteps echo softly as he scans his surroundings, relief washing over him as he realizes the monsters are no longer in pursuit. Running away now wouldn't be a loss for me, he muses aloud, a glint of satisfaction dancing in his eyes. At least I still have the equipment I picked up. At worst, I could just find an excuse for the team's defeat. Lost in his thoughts, his attention wanders, and he fails to notice the figure in front of him until it's too late. With a startled cry, he collides with the person, stumbling backward and landing hard on the ground. Before him stands the protagonist of our story, a formidable presence exuding strength and determination. His hands are casually tucked into his pockets, but his gaze is sharp and unwavering as it locks onto Lao Chen. Recognizing his adversary, Lao Chen's expression twists into a sneer. It's you again, trash boy, he spits out, his tone laced with contempt. But the protagonist meets his gaze with cool disdain, unmoved by Lao Chen's taunts. You actually betrayed your teammates just to survive, he counters, his voice dripping with disappointment. Lao Chen's gaze fixates on the fallen monsters strewn behind our protagonist, his mind buzzing with a mix of awe and suspicion. Did you do all this? Lao Chen blurts out, 
his voice tinged with disbelief as he struggles to comprehend the scene before him. Lost in thought, he murmurs to himself, I can't let him leave here. If he tells the oversight committee, I'll be in big trouble. The weight of impending consequences hangs heavy in the air as Lao Chen's mind races for a solution. Turning to face Ye Ching, a surge of desperation courses through him, his resolve hardening as he formulates a desperate plan. With a swift motion, he delivers a kick to Ye Ching's leg, his voice dripping with malice. Don't you want to be strong? Don't you want to make a name for yourself? Now is the perfect time. Feed yourself to the monsters for me. But before Lao Chen can enact his sinister plan, a notification interrupts his intentions, delivering a devastating blow to his carefully crafted scheme. Activating strength check, critical failure, it declares, sending a jolt of pain coursing through Lao Chen's body as his ill-fated kick rebounds upon him. With a cry of agony, Lao Chen crumples to the ground, clutching his injured leg as the pain sears through him. In a fit of rage and desperation, he turns to Ye Ching, his voice trembling with fury. You stinking trash! What the hell is going on here? But Ye Ching looks at him with a cold, disdainful glare. Trash! You are even worse than trash, he retorts, his words laden with contempt. Then... Ye Ching unleashes his ability, the air crackling with energy as many arms materialize behind him. In a swift and merciless motion, they seize Lao Chen, dragging him towards the ominous black fog. As Lao Chen's cries pierce the air, panic grips him, his pleas for help echoing into the void. But his words go unanswered as the scavenger's ability takes hold, scanning him with ruthless efficiency. After a moment, a notification appears. Trash sorting in progress, it declares as another notification follows, informing the protagonist of Lao Chen's designation. Unrecyclable trash. As Lao Chen is unceremoniously tossed aside like trash by the scavenger ability, Ye Ching's disappointment is palpable. Not all garbage can be recycled, he remarks. But just as hope seems lost, a glimmer of opportunity emerges with the appearance of a notification. Recycling ability activated. Can recover useless abilities with the target's consent, it declares, casting a ray of hope upon the bleak scene. Hearing the explanation, Ye Ching's lips curl into a wry smile. Does fainting mean automatic consent? That's really convenient indeed, he remarks his tone laced with a hint of amusement at the unexpected twist of fate. Seizing the moment, our protagonist activates the Spellcaster Experience card, a radiant blue aura enveloping him as the newfound power surges through his veins. With determination etched into his features, he embraces the transformation, ready to harness the full extent of his abilities. In an instant, a notification materializes before him, detailing the evolution of his newfound prowess. Acquired ability requires intelligence 15 points and your intelligence value is 50 points. Triggering over-quantum casting effect, Fireball Spell evolves into Great Explosive Inferno, it announces, heralding the birth of a devastating new ability. As the zombies materialize behind him, a sense of urgency grips Ye Ching. How do I cast the fireball spell? He mutters to himself, his brows furrowing in concentration. Memories of the spell's execution flood his mind as he attempts to replicate the motions he observed before. With a surge of determination, Ye Ching channels the spell, unleashing a massive explosion that obliterates the zombies in a fiery inferno. As the dust settles, he's left in awe of the destructive power he wields. I haven't had a chance to recycle them yet, he laments, his voice tinged with regret at the hasty destruction of his adversaries. I shouldn't just annihilate them directly. Before he can dwell further on his actions, a new threat emerges from the shadows. An assassin zombie, armed with two daggers, descends upon Ye Ching from above. 
Sensing the danger, our protagonist reacts with lightning-fast reflexes, narrowly evading the lethal strike. But the relentless assault doesn't end there. The assassin zombie lunges forward, its sights set on Ye Ching's head. With a deft maneuver, Ye Ching dodges the attack, summoning a dagger from his inventory, engaging the zombie in a fierce battle of blades. As the clash intensifies, he realizes the gravity of the situation. I haven't learned close combat skills yet, he acknowledges. Casting his gaze around, he spots the fallen body of a member of the job changer team. In a bold move, Ye Ching activates his scavenger ability, offering the fallen ally a chance at redemption. You don't want to be resurrected by that thing after you die, right? How about becoming my ally instead, he implores, his voice filled with urgency. In a twist of fate, the fallen ally bestows upon him the golden shield card. As the card activates, a shimmering shield materializes on Ye Ching's left arm. Gripping the shield tightly, he delivers a swift and decisive strike. The zombie's head is cleanly severed from its body, leaving it to crumple lifelessly to the ground. Surveying the Phelan zombie with a mixture of regret and resolve, Ye Ching offers a brief apology. I'm sorry, but I'll have to recycle your body properly too. Rest in peace, he murmurs, his voice tinged with solemnity as he begins the task of recycling the fallen zombie. With practiced efficiency, he completes the process, ensuring that even in death, the man's remains will serve a greater purpose. As he finishes, a new card materializes before him, promising a new avenue of skill and power. Dagger Proficiency Card. You can use daggers like a thief and unleash a storm of stabbing attacks, the notification declares, offering Ye Ching the opportunity to further hone his combat abilities. Without hesitation, Ye Ching activates the skill card, a surge of purple aura enveloping him. As the aura settles around him, he can feel the transformation taking hold. It feels like the ordinary stuff in my hand has become more agile he observes, a sense of satisfaction evident in his voice. With unwavering determination, Ye Ching presses forward in his relentless battle against the hordes of zombies. His eyes blaze with confidence as he faces each new onslaught head-on, his movements precise and calculated. As a zombie rushes towards him, he meets it head-on, swiftly silencing it with a decisive strike. The system alerts him to his victory, declaring, Successfully reclaimed, you gain the skill berserking. A surge of energy courses through Ye Ching as he embraces the newfound skill. Feeling his strength and agility amplified, and a brief immunity to control skills bestowed upon him. With this enhancement, he becomes an unstoppable force on the battlefield. Engaging in countless battles, Ye Ching slices through the ranks of zombies with unparalleled skill and finesse. With each victory, he grows more powerful and skilled, gaining valuable experience points by recycling the fallen zombies. His proficiency as a warrior reaches new heights as he effortlessly dispatches his enemies, his movements becoming fluid and precise with each encounter. Finally, after overcoming countless challenges, Ye Ching reaches the lair of the boss, the ultimate test of his abilities. With a determined glare, he hurls his damaged dagger and uses his scavenger ability, directing the countless hands to attack the boss. In the interrogation room of the Council of Abyssal Overseers, Lao Chen finds himself under the intense scrutiny of his interrogators. The air is heavy with tension as Lao Chen recounts the terrifying events that transpired in the depths of the dungeon, his voice quivering with fear and desperation. I swear, it was him. He's the one responsible for everything, Lao Chen exclaims. But his claims fall upon skeptical ears. The interrogator, clad in a sleek black suit, regards Lao Chen with a cold, calculating gaze. There's no evidence to support your allegations, he states flatly. You're the sole survivor of this ordeal, Lao Chen. No one else corroborates your story. But I've already told you, he exclaims, his voice rising with manic glee. 
My abilities were taken by that person, and now my level dropped to one. This, this is the proof. That person is a scavenger. The interrogator, clad in black, regarded him with a mixture of suspicion and concern. Your contamination level of abyssal energy is dangerously high, he stated, his tone grave. You're experiencing hallucinations, and the suspicion of Team Killer hangs heavy upon you. But Lao Chen shook his head. No, he cried out, his voice echoing in the room. I didn't lie to you. It really is a scavenger. As our protagonist stood amidst the bustling crowd gathered in front of the Class B Abyssal entrance, he couldn't help but reflect on his recent dealings in the black market. With a sigh, he confessed how he had resorted to selling magic crystals. A risky endeavor in a world where such transactions were tightly controlled by corporate giants. His tale unfolded, revealing the harsh reality of his actions. Despite selling the crystals, he had only received a fraction of their true value due to exorbitant black market commissions. Then his gaze falls upon his hand. If they find out about my abilities, I could be locked away for years, subjected to their cruel experiments, he mutters to himself. With a determined glint in his eye, our protagonist clenches his fist, his resolve firm despite the uncertainties that loom ahead. I must make more money while I'm free, he declares, his voice tinged with determination. But his proclamation is interrupted by a voice from the crowd. This is a newly formed abyss. Everything is an unknown variable, but the reward for this time is double, the speaker declares. The crowd's attention captured by the speaker's words. The speaker extends an invitation to those with the qualifications of a job changer, but with a caveat, only those with a grade B or above will be accepted. It's a rare opportunity in a world fraught with danger and uncertainty, a chance for our protagonist to seize his destiny and change his fortunes. With newfound determination, our protagonist steps forward. Look at me. He challenges the speaker, his voice unwavering. Do you think I'm good enough? The man's gaze lingers on our protagonist, assessing him with a critical eye. What's your rank? He inquires. Scavenger level one, our protagonist replies. Just then, the man grabs our protagonist's hand and bursts into laughter. Now, any piece of trash dares to call themselves a job changer? He mocks, his laughter ringing out across the crowd. You might as well go queue up properly with those garbage pickers. Ye Ching's mind races with calculated thoughts. If I make them think I'm weak, he murmurs to himself, they will lower their guard. He devises a plan to divert attention from his true capabilities, allowing him to carry out his clandestine activities unnoticed. This is my lazy plan, he concludes with a wry smile. Suddenly, a voice breaks through the chatter, rallying the group to action. Let's go! Among the crowd, a cry rings out. It's the daughter of the Liu family! The revelation reverberates through the crowd, accompanied by whispers of reverence. The awakened profession is a divinely chosen profession, another voice proclaims, heralding the arrival of Liu Xingran, the rising star of the Hunter Guild. With a serene demeanor, Liu Xingran addresses the group. With him, our numbers will be just enough she says calmly, her words carrying an air of authority. However, doubt lingers as one man questions Ye Ching's qualifications. But this guy is clearly only level one, and he's a newcomer without qualification certification, he protests. Liu Xingran's response is swift and decisive. It doesn't matter if you're new or not, and all being level one also doesn't matter, she asserts, her tone unwavering. You're all just here to make up the numbers, trash. The man's demeanor shifts, his skepticism replaced by acquiescence. Yes, yes, Miss Liu, he concedes with a smile. We are only responsible for protecting your safety. This is your family's business, and of course, your decisions are what matter. With a sigh of relief, Ye Ching remarks, That was close. I almost thought I was going to be kicked out again. Anyway, it's not the first day of being treated like trash. 
While she walking away, Liu Xingran's gaze falls upon Ye Qing. But this Liu Xingran, I feel like I've seen her somewhere before, Ye Qing ponders to himself. Suddenly, a memory floods back to him. It was back then, about two years ago. Suddenly, a memory resurfaces, how he had saved Liu Xingran when she was in peril, using a spear to strike down a beast that threatened her. Liu Xingran looks to Ye Qing, curiosity gleaming in her eyes. Are you from the scavenging team? Why were you able to kill the beast? She inquires, her voice tinged with wonder. But Ye Qing is lost in his triumph, the thrill of his first kill overwhelming his senses, rendering him deaf to her words. As Ye Qing receives a notification of his gained experience, Liu Xingran's surprise is palpable. Did you really gain experience using this method? She asks incredulously. Why? To make money, of course, Ye Qing replies matter-of-factly, his words leaving Liu Xingran dumbfounded. As he examines the crystals that dropped from the beast, Liu Xingran expresses her disbelief. This is the kind of experience that costs lives every time, she exclaims, her voice tinged with concern. Ye Qing remains undeterred, holding the crystal firmly in his hand. You high and mighty job changer, you don't know the hardships of us trash, he retorts. But you, going solo and leaving the team behind, you don't value your life either, facing so many monsters, charging in alone. Is it to prove something? With a proud expression, Liu Xingran responds. To get stronger, of course. I want to be the first person to pass through that place. Ye Qing is surprised by her determination, his admiration growing. Tell me, what's your real goal for changing jobs? Liu Xingran presses, her gaze intense. Ye Qing's chest swells with pride as he responds, I want to become stronger to protect my family. Liu Xingran nods approvingly before asking for his name. Ye Qing, our protagonist replies with a smile. In turn, Liu Xingren introduces herself and extends an invitation. I look forward to the day you successfully change jobs. When you do, join my team. Let's conquer that place together, she declares, extending her hand to Ye Qing. Our protagonist shakes her hand firmly. All right, but don't slow me down when the time comes, he warns playfully. Liu Xingren chuckles in response. We'll talk about it after you stay alive and successfully change jobs. Just now I took down 30 monsters by myself. You got one, well, let's say 0.5, she teases. Before further banter could ensue, Liu Xingran's subordinates arrived, dragging her away. But not before she tossed a crystal to Ye Qing, a token of acknowledgement for his achievement. With the crystal in hand, Ye Qing bid Liu Xingran farewell and ventured forth his mind already set on the next challenge that awaited him.